Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for being here, I appreciate it. This week I'm working on a very cool four color iridescent puddle pour with some Amsterdam pearlescent colors with pearl white, red, blue, and green. And leading into my pour here on my canvas, which is 12 by 24 with my oxide black in color. And I've also learned to, I guess, learn from my lessons in previous pours to begin mixing my paint the night before my pours because it's saving me a ton of time with pinholes and air bubbles. So on this base coat was a bit more thick than I'd hoped, but I was very happy with the overall consistency of the pour itself. Although it did leave me with a million bubbles even a day later. So my torch took care of those bubbles and any little um, problems later on which could have occurred. So I encourage heat as a source of popping your bubbles before your pour. Okay, and as for the pour itself, this puddle pour was a ton of fun. I began to make this pour with the pearl white, which was my first color. And on top of that, I decided to try to make it a bit more symmetrical off the beginning, knowing I had four colors to put down in the end. So I wanted a good, you know, spacing between one another, not too close, not too far, but also wanting to make a pretty, you know, uniform pattern from the beginning to the end. And now as for these paints, these are the Amsterdam pearlescent paints. So again, I have the pearl white, the pearl red, pearl green, and pearl blue. So this was my white. And I'm finding that the more I use them, the less weird they are because I find that as a paint mixture, if you're meeting a, using a medium with a paint, it typically makes your, you know, blue makes blue, magenta is magenta, red is red. However, when you look at an iridescent pearlescent color like a pearl green it is for sure not green now it dries green which is very neat um, but to pour them looks incredibly strange and it takes a bit of use to to understand that although they're white on the canvas for now they will change color later on and now again with the pearl green making sure to space it kind of accordingly with how my whites were, were placed on the canvas. So I wanted to make sure they were spaced about evenly as possible uh, based on my bigger, whiter pores earlier on, which was fine. So I wanted them spaced across the black, much like the white, making sure to, to have them touch if I could, leaving space though for my other two colors in the end. Okay, now with this puddle pour, I decided to really kind of work on some schemes or techniques I suppose with my pouring medium, my flow trawl, and my paint consistencies for the sake of my ratios. I used um, approximately one and a half ounces of paint per color and also three ounces of flow trawl and three ounces of pouring medium which is well right about half and half. So I've always used way more pouring medium than flow charles, so this is a bit of a jump for me in terms of how I mix my paints. Now I found this to be a bit more thick, which was fine, but by adding some water in the end, I could keep my consistency well, but also tell that the colors were much more bright in my cups as well. And now as a question to you guys, how do you guys mix your paints? What is your ratio? if you use flow trial or pouring medium to your paints. I'm very curious because I've seen, you know, medium is mixed with flow trial with the Australian version as well for some cells or lacing, uh, but also some, you know, possibly some gloss medium to keep it shiny. Anyway, what are your guys' thoughts on ratios and how you mix your paints? I'm really curious on how you guys kind of mix yours and what your, your secrets may be. So let me know in the comments below. Okay, now as I finished my puddles, I was pretty happy with how these puddles ended up. I wanted to add some layers on top of the color poured initially to give it more contrast and color from the initial white through to the blue I, I finished with. And now to add some depth to this painting, I wanted to just break up the puddles a little bit here. So I got my spare brush out from my, uh, my toolkit. We'll call it to just mix my colors together and one goes this side to side over half the canvas and then back and forth on the other side to get a bit of a, a opposite 
or you know contrasting pattern to the, the first side. Um, this is super calming. This is probably three times the speed as normal. I, if I could just do this on paint all day, I would sleep like a baby. But in all seriousness, no, this is a very calming part for me. It helps to like keep your mind off of things from the day or from the week and just let your, your artistic expression flow, I suppose. And uh, here we're leading to my cell activator, which I pour into the lid of an old yogurt container. So that is my trick for holding in my, my paints for my swipes. Now here's my small little paddle um, palette knife, which has come in very handy for this size swipe. I find that a 12 by 24 is a bit of an awkward size for some palette knives because they are just too small for some, but too big for others. So anyway, this swipe worked out fantastic. It was just gorgeous. And I was really in love with how well these colors mixed together initially and went back for a second pass going the opposite way. And again, I was really, really happy with how these cells worked out in comparison to my last video which was a bit of a dud, we'll call it initially, but ended up uh, finishing fairly well. Okay, now as I went in for my third swipe and my last swipe here, I could really see how the cells in my first two bigger swipes were really opening up and lighting through a ton of color, which was really cool to see. I was really impressed off the beginning of how nice the lacing was. But as it began to settle and kind of, you know, figure itself out with the cell and lacing, the colors really shone through, which again, with these pearlescent colors, they are very fun to work with. They're very hard to figure out because your, your colors, especially if you mix them, or, or of course, puddle pour them on top of each other, your puddles will mix every time and your colors might be green, they might be blue, it may be red, it's hard to say, but I know these colors are a ton of fun to work with. I would highly encourage getting a, a set or a few tubes to work with and um, I was really happy with this lacing. Now as I began to tilt these colors back and forth, I was very aware of wanting to maintain that middle, that very first swipe in the middle because it was a very big focal point of this pour and I found that if I tilted some of it off, I might lose some of the luster of this painting we'll call it because it was a a very, uh, like I say, focal point in this pour. So I was very slow and intentional with this pour. With my tilts, I went really slow on purpose to try to maintain A, the lacing in the pour to make sure it's crisp and clean and clear with my white uh, cell activator, but also not, not having to go very fast because I wasn't in a hurry and I wanted to make sure that this, um, this pour came out like I wanted it to. And now as I have been pretty bad on occasion now and then for wanting to be quick with my tilts, like I said, I wanted to be intentional with my, my tilting and placement of the paint. So I was very careful in resetting my colors back to about the center as best I could before going to a new corner. So I found that by slowing down, not rushing, you can make a much better pour, or at least in my opinion, a much better pour and ultimately ultimate result if you take your time and slow down just a little bit in taking care of some of those small details making sure your your paint is centered before you lose a portion you may want to have kept before so you know take your time go slow and good things happen and if you have enjoyed this video thanks good for being here this long i appreciate it I would really appreciate a favor by clicking the like button below to give me some support on this page here. And of course, this pour we're looking at now. Um, what are you guys' thoughts? I'd love to hear below in the comments section below on what your thoughts are in this pour. As we go in for a bit of an overhead look, this is what I got to see the entire pour. I just love this lacing. The lacing and colors that it brought out were really, really cool. The colors mixed really great, but I found that of all of my pores I've attempted lacing with, this might be the nicest, and it is maintaining its consistency and look overall from front to back as it dries. So I couldn't be more happy with how this worked out. And uh, what do you guys think? Again, let me know in the comments below on this pour. And are you a fan of lacing? Do you enjoy the cells or the reaction that 
a activator may give. I love that, that feedback as well. And now just lastly, these pearl colors by Amsterdam are just beautiful. Again, I highly recommend getting a tube or two or whatever you can afford, um, get them as you can. But these colors are really, really neat and very, very pretty. So um, no, check them out when you can and use them if you can. But again, I appreciate you being here for the video and supporting my channel. If you enjoyed this video, check out this playlist in the corner right about here and we will see you again in the next one.